Let's bring in our Legal Eagles tonight, Jim Trustee, former Justice Department prosecutor and IFRA law partner, and Brooke Rollins, president of America First Policy Institute, attorney and former director of the Domestic Policy Council for the Trump White House. Welcome back to you both. Uh, Jim, I want to start with you. If you were his attorney, what would you be most worried about for your client moving forward? Well, he's got to keep his eye on the possibility of criminal prosecution. That's obviously the most personally destructive and potentially devastating moment to get charged or convicted in criminal courts. And you've got different DAs looking at some of the allegations. You know, Shannon, I think there's two things that are worth noting about those investigations. We're probably talking about forcible touching charges, which is a one-year misdemeanor with a two-year statute of limitations. But there's two things. One is, it's going to be really interesting to see if these come to be as single events with one-offs, one victim trying to establish a difficult case through through the DA's office, or if we're going to have this kind of Bill Cosby moment where there's a critical mass and accumulation of multiple complainants within a single charging document, which is a much tougher road for Rita Glavin and Paul Fishman and the attorneys for Cuomo. Second thing I'd say real quick, keep your eyes on Melissa DeRosa. You know, mm -hmm. she was mentioned specifically by Cuomo today. He's got to keep her loyal. She could be the equivalent of a Monica Lewinsky dress in a criminal case because she's had an insider view. She's mm -hmm. going to know things about harassment and certainly know things about retaliation, which would be a pretty bad par part of the evidence against Cuomo in any of these cases. Yeah, one of his top aides who resigned just uh, within the last day or two, uh, apparently probably knowing what was coming. Um, there have been conversations about whether he was negotiating with state lawmakers over impeachment. It seemed that they were finally organized enough to move forward with that. Um, Glenn Greenwald tweeted this. He said, Democrats did not decide discover a single thing about Andrew Cuomo. They haven't always known about him, not one thing. All that changed is too much proof. Finally seeped out to the public and made ongoing support for him unsustainable. So they're now all pretending to be horrified. But Brooke, we know often it is the political that winds up being uh, the camel that, or the straw that breaks the camel's back. Well, that's right, Shannon, and thank you so much for having me on. You know, as someone I worked for, Governor Rick Perry back in Texas and then President Donald Trump, uh, personally, my heart hurts for the victims, having worked for two men that were amazing and respectful and really enabled me to run policy shops at a young age. I, I, uh, I'm very grateful to not have had those experiences, very grateful to my former bosses, and certainly to your point, none of this is new news, which is really interesting. The concept that he resigned today based on a report that basically just gathered a lot of information that we already knew to be true, I think goes to the larger political point, and that is that Governor Cuomo was no longer useful to the radical left. I think that they decided that, you know, the narrative during COVID that isn't he amazing and a miracle worker in New York versus the horrible Ron DeSantis or the even more horrible Donald Trump. And now we know that what he did during COVID really cost a lot of lives in New York. And his decision making wasn't great and and well he's no longer the you know the the perfect person we're going to hold up for the left so it's time for him to go and i think that's really what we're talking about here is is a media that lifted him up and a media that or thinks he's useful for their narrative, and, and now let's send him on his way, and that's what happened. Brooke, how do you respond? Because you know there are plenty of folks uh, out there who look at this and see those who appear to be gleeful about Governor Cuomo's downfall, and they're pointing the picture back at President Trump and saying there were allegations along the way against him. Uh, you're a woman who worked for him. Um, how do you answer those who say, listen, there were a number of women who came forward who said things that were not flattering about the president? Well, what I know to be true is this. For three years, every day, I worked in the Oval Office alongside President Donald Trump as he fought for this country. And I have never seen a president, I've never worked for a boss who's enabled more women with more respect. He had more women surrounding him on his senior staff than I think most any president to that point. And I think we all would agree, whether it was Sarah Sanders or Kellyanne Conway or Ivanka Trump or Mercy Schlapp or uh, Kaylee McEnany, we all had the most amazing experience working for him, and I often felt that I had even a better and stronger voice in his office because of the unique perspective that I brought. Okay, uh, Jim, quickly, I want to ask you about the nursing home uh, scandal. Uh, there are a lot of people, including you know my very good friend, our viewers love and know her too, Janice Dean, who say we can't let that be ignored. We got to have answers on that as well. Will we get them? 
Yeah, I'm not convinced we will. I mean, Albany might engage in a broad impeachment effort here or some sort of, you know, scathing condemnation process where they at least want to go on record blasting away at things such as the nursing home scandal. But it's been reported that DOJ civil rights has already walked away from that for potential liability mm -hmm. for governors like Cuomo. And that's surprising to me, not, not just in terms of substantively walking away, but the fact that DeRosa and Cuomo are on record through DeRosa, really, admitting that they fudged the numbers, that they lied to DOJ during the information request, which, again, is usually viewed as an independent crime of obstruction or false statements. So I'm a little disappointed. We could do like an hour show about DOJ civil rights, Shannon. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they certainly are on a mission, but it doesn't seem to include accountability for Governor Cuomo. Yeah, there are questions about whether, given the sexual harassment allegations, there could be some civil rights um, issues that DOJ could look at from a federal perspective. Uh, we won't hold our, our breath, but we'll let people know what goes on with that. Uh, Jim and Brooke, thank you both very much. Thank you, Shannon.